What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, WrestleMania is right around the corner, man. Literally, I am filming this on Friday. WrestleMania weekend starts Saturday and Sunday. So, I am looking forward to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I can't wait. So, it only makes sense to check out top 10 worst WWE WrestleMania matches of matches ever. Now, there have been some great matches. There have been some okay matches. There have been some mid matches. There have been some bad matches. And then there have just been awful. Just what are we talking about? What is this garbage? Why is this on WrestleMania? This is not a WrestleMania match. No one wants to see this. Let's get on with the next match. We, we've we had those, unfortunately. Not every WrestleMania is going to be great from top to bottom. Even some of our favorite WrestleManias definitely has some dud matches that's just what it is it's a part of the show so we're gonna check out some of these awful matches appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's do this thing it's supposed to be where the best matches happen while we've seen phenomenal bouts in wrestlemania's <sighs> over 30 year history we've also seen some pretty bad ones mm -hmm. like terry reynolds versus the cat wrestlemania 16. besides china cat and terry were the only women to wrestle at wrestlemania 16. The match can't be considered much of a technical yeah. showcase, as the only in-ring action was the women throwing each other around by their hair. The match didn't even have any pinfalls. Yeah, you saw why they had the match on. Look look at her fit. You saw why they had it on. This was that different time period. Like I said, cool WrestleMania, maybe, you know, some cool matches, different era. But there were some that were duds. <laughs> the winner was decided by throwing your opponent out of the ring. In the end, Terry cheated to pick up the win, and May finished things off by giving her longtime friend a Bronco Buster. It was complete insanity and a bizarre match to have on WWE's biggest night of the year. Yep. The Undertaker vs. Big Boss Man, WrestleMania 15. WrestleMania 15 took place during the hottest time of the Attitude Era. Steve Austin and The Rock were set to close out the night in the mm -hmm. main event, but right before that, the show featured a Hell in a Cell match. At the time, it was only the fifth one ever, so there was hope that The Undertaker and Boss Man could deliver a spectacle match, or at least an entertaining brawl. For some reason, these longtime veterans just didn't click in the ring. Mm -mm. The crowd didn't seem invested in either man winning, and didn't pop for any of the moves, and seemed bored most of the time. The announcers kept talking about how dangerous the cell was, but besides a few Irish whips, the cell itself didn't really come into play. Mm -mm. Maybe the reason was because of an embarrassing moment where Boss Man handcuffed Undertaker to the cage, only for the handcuffs to immediately break when Taker was hit with a nightstick and fell over. <laughs> Eventually, Taker gave Boston the tombstone for an anticlimactic win. Ray Wyatt versus Randy Orton, WrestleMania 33. Oh my, this should have been so much better. And Bray, Wyatt, Boy, uh, Bray Wyatt's title reign should have been longer, in my opinion. I, uh, uh. <laughs> The rivalry between Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton was pretty convoluted. The yeah. two joined forces, only for Orton to later betray Bray, of burn down the Wyatt family compound, yeah. and stick a crucifix into the grave of Sister Abigail. With such an over-the-top build for yeah. a WWE Championship match, you knew things were going to get a little weird for their eventual showdown. The match started out pretty normal, with Wyatt and Orton brawling back and forth, oh, in and out of the ring. <laughs> but after a few minutes, the arena went dark, and the camera showed an image of a bunch of men. Yeah, that, that, that. They just overbooked it. You didn't even have to do nothing. I've, I've even forgot this was a thing. I, I mentally blocked this out. They overbooked it. You didn't have to do this. You didn't. <laughs> Angus on the mat. It was supposed to be part of Bray's psychological mind games, but it just looked silly. Yeah. A couple of minutes later, another scream was shown, this time of worms, and later on, some more insects. Even when there wasn't anything supernatural happening, the Look match at the was crowd. slow and too methodical for the characters and their Look personal Look at the rivalry. crowd. To top it off, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton didn't even go nine minutes, which was too short to have a compelling WrestleMania match after months of buildup. Mr. T vs. Rowdy Piper, WrestleMania 2. Mr. T came in to continue Sucks. the feud with Rowdy <laughs> Piper, but the two decided to settle things in not a wrestling match, but a boxing match. Uh -huh. When the bell rang, Piper and Mr. T threw a bunch of sloppy looking punches and kept pushing each other into the corner. In the most infamous moment of the match, T went for a big left hand punch, which clearly missed Rowdy Piper, but he got knocked down anyways. Finally, Piper was taking a bunch of punches, got frustrated, then decided <laughs> yep. to break out a body slam, getting himself disqualified. With ring introductions, the whole spectacle of Piper vs. Mr. T lasted nearly 20 minutes and it resulted in a cheap ending. The yeah. lesson that was learned, don't have a boxing match at a show called WrestleMania. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh! 
Jake Roberts versus Rick Martel. Yeah, they're, they're shoot fighting, they're shoot boxing matches. No, just, let's just not do that. <laughs> oh, WrestleMania 7. The storyline of Rick Martel blinding Jake the Snake was a classic of its time, but every big rivalry has to have its payoff, and WWE chose for the two veterans to settle things yeah. in a blindfold match. With these wrestlers <laughs> unable to see, it was unable to see. impossible for them to put on a good match, and Roberts and Martel didn't even come close. Besides a couple of body slams and a DDT, there was virtually nothing to this match. A blindfold match may have sounded unique at the time, but it was a boring mess in execution. Yeah. Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon, WrestleMania. This infamous 26. match right here, Vince too. Vince McMahon and Bret Hart had a bitter and incredibly personal feud dating back to Survivor Series 1997. Mm -hmm. While this match seemed perfect given the real life hatred, it fell apart for a couple of reasons. Mm. Years earlier, Bret Hart unfortunately suffered a stroke, making him unable to do much in the ring. Yeah. That alone set the match up for failure, but WWE managed to make it even worse. In the storyline, Vince McMahon made it a lumberjack match and paid the members of the Hart family to serve as lumberjacks. Fans didn't buy into the idea that Brett's own family would suddenly turn their backs on him. And of course, they didn't. Before the bell even run for the WrestleMania match, it was revealed that the Hart family was still together. As the match started, Brett threw some punches and stomped away at his former boss and then threw him to ringside. The Hart family beat up McMahon some more, <laughs> even hitting him with a heart attack on the outside. Jeez. From there, Brett started hitting Vince repeatedly with a crowbar. Hart then picked up a chair and continued his opponent <laughs> with it over and over again. It went on way too long. Yeah. And by the end, the crowd definitely didn't care about the match. In all, Vince didn't land a single offensive move against Brett in a match that could have been incredibly entertaining under... Yeah, it should have... They should have did it. They, once again, got overbooked, a little sloppy, but... We just want to see Brett kick the shit out of Vince McMahon. That's it. Quick, straight to the point. Should have been like maybe a 10-minute match if that crowd would have still been hot for it. Would have been a cool little pop, cool little moment, and everybody going on about their day. Different circumstances failed to deliver a memorable showdown. Goldberg vs. Brock Lesnar, WrestleMania 20. Yeah. Goldberg vs. Brock Lesnar. Infamous one right here. Dream match. But in reality, it was incredibly boring. Goldberg's one year contract was ending, and shortly before WrestleMania 20, Brock shockingly decided to leave WWE 2. Fans heard the news and immediately greeted the two superstars with boos during mm -hmm. the match. Instead of a bunch of explosive power moves, Goldberg vs. Brock was mostly built on a lot of stalling and extended submissions. Mm -hmm. The only entertaining part about it was how vocal the crowd was at booing both men. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, Goldberg and Lesnar had a much better match 13 years later at yeah. WrestleMania 33. While it is nice knowing these two eventually had a proper showdown, their first encounter at WrestleMania 20 will live on in infamy. For the wrong Undertaker reasons. Undertaker vs. Giant Gonzalez, WrestleMania 9. Giant Gonzalez <laughs> had recently made his WWE debut. The company had big plans for him and had him wrestle against Undertaker at WrestleMania 9. That's crazy as how soon tall as the he bell was. Rang, it was clear that Gonzalez didn't have any wrestling ability. Gonzalez also had really goofy facial expressions <laughs> every time he was hit and didn't seem to know how to sell any of Taker's offense. The match made. It's, it's really crazy because it's, it's a big ass dude in a bodysuit with muscles on the bodysuit. It's kind of wild. Really consisted of some punches, a lot of taunting, and a long headlock. Even the ending was awful, as Gonzalez used a rag full of chloroform right in front of the referee, leading to a disqualification. When WWE looks back at Undertaker's WrestleMania streak, they often overlook this match, and probably for good reason. Where the chloroform this WrestleMania battle came from? WrestleMania 25. Oh, it's boy. arguable that WrestleMania 25 has the best WrestleMania match ever. Facts. It also had one of the worst WrestleMania matches as well. Yep, it was unfortunately. A start when none of the wrestlers even received an entrance. I, I said this. Yeah, you can have a WrestleMania where there's some like literally a legendary match that you'll always remember, and on that very same show, it'll be a match that you try to put out your mind and forget ever existed. As they all came down to the ring when Kid Rock sang, no one had their names announced, which wouldn't have been terrible, Santino but because of that, most match. fans Jeez. didn't know that returning wrestlers like Molly Holly and Sonny were even there. The whole thing was a setup as an unfunny joke for Santino Morel's twin sister, Santina, to win by throwing Beth Phoenix and Melina over the top rope. 
This match was horrible at the time, and it's only gotten worse with age. It's bad, but only one WrestleMania match was worse. Awful. Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole, yep. WrestleMania you know 27. What? That's a good Despite number one Jimmy's spot. WWE debut in 1993, Jerry the King Lawler never had a WrestleMania match until 2011. Unfortunately, the King didn't have a fellow legend or an up-and-coming wrestler to take on. Instead, he battled fellow commentator Michael Cole. Awful. The whole thing was a bad idea. Awful. Cole obviously wasn't a trained wrestler, so if they had to have this match, it should have only gone a couple of minutes top. Facts. Instead, Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole went nearly 14 minutes, which was almost as long as the main event between The Miz and John Cena. Even with the involvement of Steve Austin as guest referee, the crowd wasn't into it and started a boring chant. Yeah. Topping everything off was the ending. Cole eventually tapped out to an ankle lock, but after a celebration between Austin and Lawler, the anonymous Raw general manager chimed in to disqualify the king and award the win to Michael Cole. This is so From start stupid. to finish, this match was horrible. Stupid. Due to how long it went on for, the awful in reaction, and the terrible ending, Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole stands out as the worst WrestleMania match of all time. Yeah, the only right. thing that's worse. Yeah, man. I, 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 I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I couldn't. It's, nah. <sighs> the anonymous GM era, all that. Michael Cole's unbearable, unbearable commentary. Just, it wasn't even like good heel heat. It was just like, good God, get him off the headset. Oh, that was kind of a lackluster WrestleMania, in my opinion. That main event, it was all right. It, for certain reasons, obviously, Rock and stuff getting involved with the old John Cena in this situation, but still. Yeah, man. <laughs> Comment down below. Let me know what's your worst WrestleMania match if it wasn't on this list that you can remember, man. But I appreciate all love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K, and I am still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world and you're in the Clutch World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.